Hi, this is Jeff Heen. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. So in this class, we are going to look at the third of three videos that I wanted to show you from my student presentations. And in this one, we're going to look at Team GHPPY, which is the team that got the best RMSE of the class and were therefore the winners of the Kaggle competition. In this competition, what they were tasked to do was count the paper clips in an image. Now, this is very applicable to the real world. They could be counting cars or houses or something from a satellite image or other things. What I'm going to show you here is their solution. It is also, in terms of components, probably one of the more simple of the three that we're looking at. Simple is great in data science. I love simple models because they're easy to implement. That doesn't mean that this team didn't try a lot of the other technologies that, that were used. What they focused on is a simple, robust model, feature engineering, and getting the hyperparameters tuned very well. And in the end, they, they had the least overfit score because they rose two ranks in the Kaggle competition when the final thing ended. So let me go ahead and introduce Team GHPPY. The speaker is Perry Pang, who is a analytics major in graduate student in the, the Olin Business School. The others are also in graduate degree programs related to analytics as well. So the team members are David Gu, Zun Wang Pan, Perry Peng, the speaker, and Jessica Yun. All right, I will now hand this over to Perry. To see all my videos about Kaggle, neural networks, and other AI topics, click the subscribe button and the bell next to it and select all to be notified of every new video. Hi everyone, I'm the team leader of JHPPY. So I believe maybe our team is the only team which our team name doesn't, doesn't have any specific meaning. It's just our uh, last name for all five group members. So I will give you a brief uh, introduction and some of things we did during this uh, project. I believe this uh, presentation will be very fast since we did not do too much things. Uh, so first we can briefly look at the data set. So the data content we use uh, all 40k. We all will use uh, 40k uh, images to do the training and since the, since the uh, prediction should be 5k so we want to keep the validation set as the same size as the prediction set. So uh, it can give us a uh, best uh, imitation of the of the uh, actual RMSC. So after uh, taking a first glance at the images, so there are basically two types of the images as you all know. Uh, the first one is likely left hand set, which contains not only a lot of uh, paper clips but also the red and blue gray. So this lines we believe is not useful for us to do the uh, training for the convolution neural network. And the right hand side is less common, but indeed there are a few of the images which do not have any paper clips. Uh, this is actually very useful for us to remove the lines by simply doing the subtraction uh, from the left hand side, uh, from the left hand side. So after doing the uh, subtraction of the matrix, uh, as a result, the images will become the left-hand side, the uh, black black background, and also the gray uh, paper clips. However, since there are still, uh, as you can see, there are still some colors uh, lying in these images, we believe this information is still not very useful for us to do the uh, to do the prediction and training. So as a result, we first uh, we first convert these images to the grayscale images and uh, make a copy for three and reshape back to uh, 256 by 256 by three. And then uh, we do the rescale by taking, uh, by dividing the matrix by uh, 255. So that's what we did during the pre-processing process. Uh, in order to do the 
feature engineering and uh, data augmentation. Uh, so basically, we for at first we tried a lot of things, but we should keep in mind that we should keep the uh, image size at, as before. Since if we try to resize the images or do something like uh, shifting uh, to the left horizontal or along the vertical, uh, this will make us lose some of the information. Since as you may not uh, as you may notice, there are a lot of paper clips on the margin of the images. So once we do the resize or shift, uh, this part of paper clips will lose and make our label, uh, make our uh, ground truth label actually become wrong. So we will keep the image size. At first, we also try to uh, improve the contrast between the darkness and the brightness. However, it doesn't work very well, so we gave up this choice. Uh, as the result, we only uh, left the uh, purpose test, uh, we only left the words such as doing the vertical and the horizontal random flip and keep the shuffle as true. And we set the batch size equal to 64 and the steps per apple is uh, 1350. So as a result, it will give us around 90k, uh, 90K images to train during each epoch by doing the data augmentation. And that's good since it can double our training set. Since the simplest CIFAR-10 uh, classification images still give us uh, 60K images to train for each class. So we think it should be better for us to enlarge our data set by doing this. And for the model, model selection, at first glance of the what the professor provided us of the hint version, uh, the validation MSE is less than five within five epochs, which indicate that the RMSE will lower than 2.5 within, within five epochs by a very simple structure and without any uh, feature engineering work. So this indicates that this data set is actually very easy to train and in other words, very easy to overfit it. So at first, we still try some very famous uh, classification based uh, uh, convolution neural networks such as VGG, LHNet, and re also residual net. But all of these uh, networks all have very serious overfitting issue and their, uh, their training error will converge very quickly, but their validation MSE will retain at a high level. So as a result, uh, we develop our own network structures, which after testing, this is the uh, best we can get. So there's only four simple same convolution, uh, convolution layer, and then uh, followed by four, four fully connected layer, and then the output layer. So this uh, this uh, this structure, we believe that this best what we can get since. It doesn't have an it doesn't have very serious overfitting issue. The training and also the validation MSE will always keep at the same level and uh, keep decreasing until the early stop uh, works. But at first we we'll try to we we'll hope we can address the uh, overfitting issue by doing the by doing the batch normalization and also the dropout. But actually this will only make the learning pace become very slow. And, and since less than 40 apps, we can get the single MSE for lower than uh, 0 0.5. So we believe that's good enough. So we did not uh, use the batch normalization and also the dropout finally. And uh, at last, since we use different types of data to do the training, such as use a colorful image and also use the single image but with three, uh, three same uh, layers and also the grayscale uh, single channel image. Uh, it will return some different uh, prediction result and also we use a much simpler structure to make a prediction. It doesn't work well as well as the model 2 but it still seems to retain, uh, give us a uh, MSE like close to 0 0.8 so we'll uh, so we 
triplet. And we do the prediction for the validation set and use the prediction result and and the their true label to run the linear regression and what it returns of the coefficient will be the proportion for each of the model to make the final prediction. And after commanding the final result, we submit the result and achieve this. So that's basically what we did. And that's all. Thank you for listening. Okay, thank you. Yes, very, very, very good. Does does anybody have any questions? Feel free to unmute yourself or or use chat. Okay, I'll go ahead and and give you a couple. First of all, I will tell you that what what I was impressed with with your solution is you did you did jump up to two levels at the very, very end. So you might not have been expecting to, to to be in the first place, but definitely due to not overfitting uh, to the to the leaderboard, you that's usually what what attributes that. So so definitely very, very good on that. As you were trying out different solutions, was there any one thing that you did that you felt that that gave you the most significant significant boost in your score as you were trying out different things? Uh, yeah, so first of all, uh, before we remove that, remove the blue and the red lines, the arrow will keeps at like 1.3. Uh, after removing that, uh, without any improvement of our model structures, it will directly jump to 0 0.74. The, okay. Yeah. Yeah, very, very good. I also saw you had the had the five dense layers at the end which is which is interesting and i like it seems fairly common the approach you did where you had um more neurons starting out and then fewer as you got down to that final one layer did you did those five dense layers were they particularly helpful as you were trying out different things yeah we also like trying only one five uh 512 and uh, uh then goes to one or goes to to, uh, we also try like more neurons and fewer neurons, but this one seems like the most stable and the worst. Well, okay. Did you run into any process? Because the, were you were you doing this on Colab or were you using something else? Yeah, we uh, we do it on Colab. Okay. Did you run into any problems with some of the slowdowns that the internet was having the last few weeks? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So it basically will shut down uh, at. Uh, every 12 hours. Yeah. So as a result, I apply for the membership. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then it frees up. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, congratulations on on your on your position. Very, very good. If, is there any any other questions? Thank you for watching the presentation. This concludes the three Kaggle competitions that I wanted to show you for this semester. I run one of these Kaggles just about every every semester. And if you're interested in following these, please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time.